Hey, Jeff Lerner here, and uh, today we're gonna be looking at should you go to college? Uh, this is a question that's kind of a hot item in you know popular culture today and in the media, obviously with the, the rising cost of college and student debt being such a big issue for so many people and a lot of uncertainty in the job market. A lot of people are wondering, should you go to college or should I go to college? And today we're gonna be tackling that question. Okay, so should you go to college? Yes, no, maybe. Moment of truth. All of that depends on your situation. Not surprisingly, right? You, you probably didn't think I was literally gonna like paint myself in that corner of picking one and having to defend that decision to the whole internet, right? Here's the reality is it really is a yes, no, maybe situation, um, but there's definitely some things to consider about the decision to go to college that I don't think really get talked about a lot um, in schools and with guidance counselors and with even parents necessarily because so much has changed since parents went to college. Even myself, I'm 40 years old, I have four kids and I recognize that the world that they're having to make decisions in about how they're gonna approach their future is so dramatically different than the world that I was approaching you know, 20, 25 years ago when I was making the same decisions around going to college. Um, so let me start by sharing a little bit about my college experience because I think my college experience illustrates uh, some truths that maybe the traditional college experience doesn't illustrate. Um, first of all, I, I actually went to college a year early uh, after dropping out of high school, which is a whole other story. Um, but I will say, I say that to tell you that, you know, even 20, whatever that was, 23 years ago for me, um, there, there are options um, that are non-traditional paths, but you do have to like seek them out. And for me, it was how can I stop going to high school because I'm not really digging high school and I'm not really seeing much point for me, but I still wanna pursue education, so how do I accelerate and get to college early? And I was able to do that then. And now it's a lot easier to do sort of flexible, non-traditional things than it even was when I was doing it. But I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I was a creative writing major, I was a music major, I was a theater major, I was a musical theater major for a while, I, on, the, on the, the composing side, not like the singing and dancing side. Um, although I did end up doing some of that too. Like I tried all this stuff and it was all the kind of stuff that people roll their eyes at and they're like, oh, you'll never make any money doing any of that. But that's the point. I didn't have a clear path. I didn't have clear goals. Frankly, I was kind of too young to be in college. And that's really kind of my basic point and my basic belief about college is that like college has its place. You should go to college when you're really clear about what it is that you wanna do, what it is that you wanna achieve, and if you've picked something you know, specialized that requires a college degree or that requires specialized training that you can only get in a you know, post high school structured academic environment, that's great. Like if you wanna be a chiropractor, you're gonna to need to go to college. If you wanna be an electrical engineer, even though frankly, you could probably learn a lot of the stuff without college, in order to get one of those jobs, you're gonna probably need to go to college. Uh, if you wanna start a business, you don't need to go to college. Take it from somebody who, frankly, the only reason I finished college was because my ex-wife's dad, who was like real traditional and kind of stuffy, was like, oh, I'll never approve of this guy for my daughter unless he finishes college. And so I basically finished college to, to please him, which didn't work anyways and for him or his daughter and, and we got divorced and that whole thing fell apart. Bah. But actually I am kind of glad I finished just cause it's like a box to check, but I majored in jazz piano and I did minor in finance, but frankly, the, the you know, managerial accounting and things I took in finance that, that do help me in business, I could have learned that stuff online. I could have learned that stuff. Uh, in fact, I mean, not to shamelessly plug my own business, but I have a company called Entra that'll teach you all the, the math and the marketing and the, the mechanics of owning your own business on, especially if you're into like a digital business or um, you know, building wealth through entrepreneurship. Like there's a lot of ways out there uh, to learn that stuff that I don't think you need to rack up the student debt and spend the money on college um, to get access to the information. If you're going to college just to get access to information, 
there probably are more efficient, more cost-effective ways to get the information. But if you're going to college because you know that you're gonna need either the certification that comes with the, you know, the graduation, or you're gonna need the relationships that come through your professors, like you know, a lot of times your professors are networked and they can lead into jobs and stuff. You know, there's, there's reasons, but if you don't have a really, really clear vision for exactly why you need to go to college, and frankly, exactly why what you're learning in college, you actually need to be learning in a college environment and not in some alternative environment, then I would say hold off. I would say get a job doing sales. I would say join the military. I would say travel the world as part of a dance troupe. I do something creative, be an artist for a few years, like do anything. Um, obviously you gotta make ends meet. And that's, I think sales is great because you learn a lot of creative and free thinking skills. You learn a lot of the discipline kind of stuff you'd get out of the military, but you can also accelerate your economic path through sales. But whatever you do, until it's really, really abundantly clear to you what direction you wanna go, there's probably not a compelling reason to be taking on the debt that's typically associated with college. Now, even if you know what you wanna do, and you know you wanna go the college route, what I would suggest is get as much of the college credit component done without going to college as you can before you go to college. Like if you're gonna have to take calculus, and you're gonna to have to take US history, and you're gonna to have to take English literature, and you're gonna to have to take all these courses, figure out the cheapest way to take those courses. Don't be paying the tuition at University of Texas or Duke University or you know, UC Berkeley. Don't be paying that tuition to take courses that you could basically get in a community college or even probably some way to test out online. Be as efficient as you possibly can about your education. And this is honestly probably my fundamental problem with the educational system. Education does not approach itself like a business. Like the educational system doesn't teach you to approach it the way you any business person would, which this, here's the thing, like in, in, whether you realize it or not, from the day that your parents are not paying for your life, you're in business. If you're in the business of life, you're in the business of trading time for money, economic impact, creating leverage, trying to harness the power of compounding, trying to accrue wealth over time. You're in the business of trying to set yourself free, trying to give yourself the opportunity to pursue things because you love them, not just because you have to do them. Like you're in business from the day that you take responsibility for your own life. And yet college so often takes this like almost libertine, like reckless view of itself that's like, come and be this free spirit and just explore and and you know organisms that aren't growing with a purpose are decaying organisms and that's why college life is frankly so screwed up i mean look at the stats look at the data look at the media look at the problems look at the trends on college campuses like it's not a healthy place and it's because you have a lot of people that that don't have a direction and they've been taught that there's this period of life where they're technically adults but it's okay to be aimless that's nonsense. That's a, like a, a contradictory statement. You can't be an adult and be aimless. Children are aimless. And this idea of like come to college and start to feel your way around as an adult, but yet we're gonna put you in an environment where you completely lack direction and you can just kind of try everything. That's not actually, that's not a microcosm of life. That's not an incubator for life. That's a cell for veering off course from what's actually happening in the real world. They don't, college doesn't teach itself as a, as a pragmatic, like they teach Adam Smith, they teach economics, but they don't approach themselves through the lens of Adam Smith and economics. It's, it's actually kind of farcical if you think about it. So go to college when it is clearly and exclusively the only option for you in terms of pursuing what you wanna do. And until that point, I would suggest find ways to support yourself, find ways to educate yourself, um, find ways to, to really grow and thrive without it because college is expensive um, and college takes a lot of time. It's actually a pretty inefficient way to learn. You know, again, I'll, I'll reference my business, Entra. Like we can teach people more about marketing and not to like be rude here, but I used, my ex-wife was like a marketing major and she didn't know crap about marketing. Sorry if you're watching this. Like she literally didn't know about marketing. She spent four years not learning about marketing while getting a marketing degree. I spent like six months on the internet when I got started like 12 years ago 
And in six months, I knew more about real direct response, ROI driven, make or break business, you know, analytics and metrics based marketing than she learned in four years of like talking about theory. And the problem is most professors are not practitioners. Uh, most people that teach business in college don't have a bottom line they have to maintain. Most people that teach marketing in, in college don't have a marketing bottom line they maintain. There, but again, there are certain, certain channels in colleges where that's not the case, like medical school. I certainly hope your medical school, you're being taught by actual doctors. I hope you're learning surgery from actual surgeons. I hope you're learning psychiatry from actual psychiatrists. And in that case, party on, that's great. If that's the path you wanna go down, and you can kinda tell. In fact, I'm realizing this as I say this. One of the, the, the filters that you can look at a college environment through is, is this channel or this industry or this category of learning, like whatever it is, this trade being taught by actual practitioners of the trade? If yes, then understand this. What that means is that the college, they're having to pay more likely for those professors because college professors don't actually make that much money relative to the you know, budgets and the, the size of the economy in which they operate. So if they're bringing in, like I'll give you an example. So I was a musical theater major uh, for a time in college and they brought in a guy who was an actual Tony Award winning musical theater producer to teach something called the musical theater collaboration class. The reason they brought him in is because there was no non-professional musical theater professor that could have done that job. They actually needed the professional guy and they paid him a lot more than they paid the other professors. That's something that tells you that, okay, if I want to do that thing, I'd probably well be well served to study it in that environment. But like if you're taking classes from people that don't actually make a living doing the thing that they're teaching. Like if you're taking an English class from somebody who's not actually a professional writer or somehow, you know, maybe at the very least they've written large scale books of English criticism or literary criticism or something that is like setting them up as an actual true compens compensated, not just theoretical compensated practitioner of the thing that they're teaching, then you're probably A, not getting quality education and B, you're probably learning something in a college environment that doesn't require you to be in a college environment. Anyway, so that's kind of a complex answer to what seemingly a simple question. The final thing that I'll say is whatever you're doing in college, again, unless you are one of these, like, like the Doogie Housers of the world, like the, the one track, I know exactly what I'm doing and I know exactly what I'm going after. And I know that the only way to go after it is to be here in college. Then at the very least, if you are in college, I would strongly suggest starting some kind of, you know, vocational side hustle, side gig, like, like go out and ply a trade in the world because it's, it's a lot easier in a lot of ways to figure out what you want to do. This is the biggest trap of college is come to college and figure out what you want to do in the world. That makes no sense. That's like saying go to the moon and figure out what you want to do here on earth because college is as unlike the real world as the moon is unlike the earth. You're not going to go to the moon to figure out how to survive and thrive here on earth. You're not going to go to college to figure out what you want to do in the real world. So if you do find yourself in college, maybe your parents made you go, maybe you just went that way with, you know, went with the flow or whatever, at least do something that gets you out into the real world so that you can start to figure it out outside that environment. Anyways, that's, uh, that's my two cents about college. I, I spent quite a bit more than two cents on college. Um, and that's as a jazz piano major, I interestingly enough, paid it all off without jazz piano because I was able to start a business which did not in any way really rely on my college education. But that's a story for another time. Thanks for uh, tuning in. If you like this kind of content, uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you click the little alarm bell so that you get notified when I post future videos. And let me know your thoughts on this. Did you go to college? Should you go to college? Are you going to college? Are you in college? Is it serving you? Is, it, is the stuff I'm saying true? Am I up in the night and I need to go back to college because I don't really remember what it's like? Like, let me know your thoughts. Uh, I do try to respond to every comment and I appreciate your time. I'll catch you on the next video.